So let's look at how to discharge a capacitor. The previous lecture spoke about charging a capacitor in an RC circuit, and this one we're going to be talking about discharging the capacitor. So this is the circuit we looked at when we were charging the cap uh, or the capacitor. Um, the current flew, I mean, the current flowed and in, in the clockwise direction in this circuit, charging this capacitor to a charge of Q final. And now, to discharge, we remove the battery. And this is what the circuit looks like. This is still a cap. This is the resistance. Now, if the charging took place in the clockwise direction, the discharging has to take place in the anti-clockwise direction, right? So, remember the equation we wrote for this one using the Kirchhoff's loop law was E minus IR minus Q over C equals zero, right? Here, there's no E, so E is zero. So, we just use the rest of the equation. IR minus Q over C equals zero, right? If you rearrange this, it's IR equals minus Q over C, therefore I equals minus Q over RC. Right? Just, with it, just as we did in the previous um, lecture, put I as DQ over DT equals minus Q over RC. And again, uh, we can pair the Q with the DQ for to enable easy integration and here we are. Q equals minus dt over rc. And now we integrate from, now if you look at the circuit, after charging the final charge was qf. Here we do have qf but then it is going to start to discharge so let's call it q0, q0. Okay? There's no difference between qf and q0, it's just different terms we're using in different circuits. All right, it's the total charge inside the capacitor. So this, while discharging, goes from Q0 to some small value Q. All right, and here, start from 0 time, 2 time, T. Right, and as we did before, just put little prime signs on these just because we, have, we want different variables while integrating. So what do you get when you integrate this? Natural log of Q prime going from Q naught to small q equals minus T over RC. Okay, so if we apply these, what happens? Natural log of Q minus natural log of Q naught equals minus T over RC. Uh, log of something minus log of the other thing can be directly written as log of that over the other thing, right? It's as simple as that, minus T over RC. And let's now take the anti-logs on both sides. So we're left with Q over Q naught equals E power minus T over RC, right? Well, if you watched the previous lecture, all this is just pretty simple. So therefore, we can write small Q equals Q naught times E power minus T over RC. Right, that is the equation for charge when a capacitor is getting discharged. Well, if you want to compare that to when we were charging the capacitor, it was Q equaled QF1 minus E power minus T over RC. And I mentioned before that QF and Q0 are pretty much the same, just figuratively different when you're talking about charging and discharging. That's the uh, difference between these two. Uh, equations and this is for discharging and again as we did before if you want to find the equation for current just differentiate this equation right with respect to time dq over dt is differential of this is q naught times minus 1 over rc times e power minus t over rc right so here you have a negative Q naught over RC 
times e power minus t over rc. If you go back to the top here, right, small i equaled negative small q over rc, essentially this is the same, right? The initial current. So negative, I mean, so this can be termed as I naught times E power minus T over RC. Right, so let me write that down again. I equals I naught E power negative T over RC. This is the equation for current and as we did for charge, Q equaled Q naught E power negative T over RC. You don't need to necessarily memorize this, but if, if you can, That'd be amazing. It's pretty simple to apply later on. Thanks for watching.